Hello viewers, today we are going to discuss one of the epics Silapadikaram. Its objectives are to understand the importance of this epic Silapadikaram in Sangam Tamil literature, to read and understand the niceties in the epic Silapadikaram, the place of the novel in Tamil literature to understand the morals being imparted through Silapadikaram. There are great five epics in Tamil, namely Silapadikaram, Manimegalai, Chivaga Sintamani, Valayapati and Kundarakesi. They belong to the literature of Kadai Changam, that is Lost Sangam. Silapadikaram, the tale of an anklet, is considered as best and first out of the five. It is held in high esteem by the Tamils as a literary work. The nature of the book is non-religious, narrative and has a moralistic undertone. The date of Silapadikaram has been determined to be around the 5th and 6th centuries C. The epic revolves around Kannagi who lost her husband due to a miscarriage of justice at the court of the Pandya king, wrecks her revenge in his kingdom and becomes the goddess of chastity. The story travels in three Tamil kingdoms of the ancient era, the Chera, the Chola and Pandya regions. Regarded as one of the great achievements of Tamil genius, the Silapadikaram is a poetic rendition with the details of Tamil culture. Ilangodihal, a Jain poet prince from Chera Kingdom in modern day Kerala, is the author of this work. He was the brother of Sengutuan from Chera dynasty. One day, when Sengutuan and his younger brother Ilango, along with the others, were discussing something in the palace, at that time, an astrologer came and predicted that Ilongo would become the future king of the Chera dynasty. The young Ilongo was shocked and did not want to become the king because his elder brother Sengutuan should ascend the throne as per the tradition. In the process, the furious Ilongo suddenly got up and vowed that he would be renouncing this world from that very moment and becoming a saint so that his brother can become a king easily. From then on, he became Ilongo Adihal, Saint Ilongo. Accompanied by his brother, Ilongo and his friend poet Satanar, the Chera king Sengutuan went to see the scenic beauty of the country side near the river Periyaru. He then heard a story from neighboring villages that a woman with a single breast was sitting in penance under a Vengai tree without food and water for 15 days and then died. Intrigued and moved by the incident, Cheran Sengutuvan yearned to know more details about it. His friend Satanar, the poet, explained the story and said that the name of the woman was Kannagi and she was worshipped as the goddess of chastity in the villages. He narrated the tragic story to Sengutuan. Moved by the story, the king asked Ilango Adihal to write the story of Kannagi so that her name would be spread all over his kingdom for the benefit of the mankind. He also decided to construct a temple for Kannagi in his kingdom. Sixteen-year-old Kovalan, the son of a wealthy merchant in Kaveri Pumpatnam, Pumpuhar, then capital of Cholas, married a twelve-year-old Kannagi, the lovely and beautiful daughter of an merchant. Kovalan has much interest in dance, art and songs and was best in playing yard, a string instrument like Veena. For some time, they lived very happily 
until Kovalan met the dancer Madhavi in a dance performance at the royal court of Karigala Chola and fell in love with her and became infatuated with her beauty, glamour and artistic skills. One day in the bazaar, the maid servant of Madhavi displaying a garland in her hand said in a louder voice that those who buy this can get Madhavi. Longing for Madhavi's love, Kovalan bought the garland and followed to Madhavi's house and in his infatuation forgot Kannagi and his home. He led a chaste life with Madhavi and enjoyed her dance playing with his yard and also bore a daughter Manimekalai. Gradually he lost all his wealth brought from Kannagi's home from time to time in the pursuit of happiness with his mistress. Gradually misunderstanding crept in between both of them. Once they engaged in a discussion, they differed seriously on a point which caused their separation. Being a penniless, Kovalan returned repentantly to his wife Kanagi, who welcomed him. Madhavi made several attempts to meet Kovalan, but in vain. Finally, Madhavi, after giving birth to Manimekalai, renounced the world and became a saint once she was ensured that Kovalan would never return to her. Kovalan wanted to start a new lease of life for retrieving the lost wealth. The only fortune left with them was a precious pair of anklets which Kannagi gave him willingly to sell. They left for the great city of Madurai, ruled by Pandya king, with a hope to sell the anklets and recoup his fortunes by trade. On their arrival at Madurai, they found a shelter in a cottage and Kovalan went to the market to sell one of Kanagi's anklets. At that time, the court jeweller had already stolen the anklet of the queen of Pandyan Nadinjarian and was waiting for an opportunity to pass the blame on someone. The court jeweller saw Kovalan with the Kanagi's anklet and immediately seized it and informed the king. Guards were sent to apprehend Kovalan, who was then beheaded on the king's orders. When the news was brought to Kannagi, she went out into the town with her eyes ablaze with anger, carrying the remaining anklet in her hand. She confronted the king in the open court and demanded justice. The king told her that the anklet of his queen has pearl stones inside. He showed the anklet seized from Kovalan to Kanagi. She grabbed and threw it against the ground, forcibly from which lot of ruby stones spread all over. She proved that her anklet contained rubies, while those of queen contained only pearls. The king realized his mistake and fell down and died immediately. On seeing the king's death, his wife, the queen Kopirin Devi also fell on the king and died. Still Kannagi could not control her rage and the injustice done to her husband. She cut off one of her breasts and threw it at the city, cursing it to burn. The city burned as expected. At last, the Pertan goddess of the city interceded with the Kannagi and agreed to withdraw her curse and in turn the fire abated. Weak with the loss of blood from her self-amputated breast, Kanegi left for Chera kingdom and struggled to a hill outside the city. She did penance for 15 days without food and water and later she died. Meanwhile, the news of her death spread throughout the Tamil land. She was glorified, temples were raised and festivals held in her honor and she became the patron goddess of wifely loyalty and chastity. Silapadigaram contains three chapters and a total of 5,270 lines of poetry. 
Silapadigaram used to agaval meter monologue, a style adopted from Sangam literature. The epic mentions the evenings and spring season, in particular as time and season that aggravates the feeling in those who are separated. These patterns are found only in the later works in Sanskrit by Kalidasa, 4th century C. These authors went beyond the nature of Sangam poems, which contain descriptions of human emotions and feelings in an abstracted fashion. Silapadigaram divided into three chapters. Puhar Kandam, Puhar chapter containing ten cantos or divisions. Madurai Kandam, Madurai chapter containing thirteen cantos and Vanji Kandam, Kanchi chapter containing seven cantos. The epic also vividly describes the Tamil society of the period, its cities, the people's religious and folk traditions and their gods. The Silapadigaram, apart from being the first known epic poem in Tamil, is also important for its literary innovations. It introduces the intermingling of poetry with the prose, a form not seen in previous Tamil works. It invokes the sun, the moon, the river Kaveri and the city of Pumpuhar at its beginning against the contemporary tradition of praising a deity. It is also considered to be a predecessor of the Nigandu lexographic tradition. It has 30 monologues sung by any character in the story. It has 25 cantos composed in Agaval meter used in most poems in Sangam literature. Silapadigaram is also credited to bring folk songs to literary genre. Besides its emphasis on chastity and other moral quotes, it is a vast treasure of information of music and dance, both classical and folk. Silapadigaram is a veritable treasure of the art and culture of the Tamil people. When Ilangodihal introduces Madhavi and her dancing debut in the Chola capital of Puhar, he displays an incredible comprehension of the technicalities of Tamil music and dance and his fascinating accounts of the details of the fine arts. Kalidas wrote Sakuntalam, in which a ring was the center of controversy, but he gave the heroine's name as the title of the work instead of the ring. Shakespeare wrote Othello, which is centered on a handkerchief. He had titled the hero's name for the drama instead of the handkerchief. But Ilungo Adihal had neither given the name of the hero nor the heroine. Instead, he had given the anklets themselves as the title of the work, setting a revolutionary precedent. Silapadigaram stands proud in showing the power of the language. When the court jeweler met the king, and told he had caught the anklet thief. The angry king ordered to bring the accused Kuttavaliyai Konduvarangal, but the jeweller informed the soldiers to kill the accused Kuttavaliyai Konduvarangal and got him killed. A change in a small alphabet in Tamil has cost a man's life. The outstanding feature of Silapadigaram is the equanimity of its author Ilango Adigal towards religion, society and politics. Though he was a Jain monk, he did not use the epic to spread the principles of Jainism. He had blended the religious inputs nicely with the flow of the story. But in the epic Manimekalai, its author Satanar used the work to teach Buddhist philosophy. In spite of his views on unchaste woman, Ilangodihal took a more pragmatic and reformatory attitude in casting Madhavi as one of the three main characters in Silapadigaram. He introduced Madhavi as one hailing from a family who led an unchaste life. He, however, projecting her in the best possible light throughout the story. After she became Kovalan's mistress, she proved to be very faithful, displaying all the characteristics of a housewife. 
the sentiments expressed in her letter to Kovalan stand evidence for her chastity and loyalty. She expressed her repentance over her past life to her mother and vowed that the family trait of unchastity should end with her life. In a moving passage, she swore that she would bring up her daughter Manimekalai in a spiritual atmosphere. Ilungo Adihal thus achieved two purposes in his portrayal of Madhavi. He exalted an unchaste woman to a very high status comparable to Kannagi based on her fidelity, penance and renunciation. And two, he delivered a powerful message that it is not birth but virtuous life alone that was important. The romance, the tragedy and the heroism as well as the nice blend of literature, music and stage into a coherent masterpiece and the elevation of a chaste woman to a saintly level makes Silapadikaram a monumental epic. After the last line of a poem, nothing follows except a literary criticism. According to Calcutta Review, the three epic works on a whole have no plot and no characterization to qualify for an epic genre. In Greek and other European sources, prominence of a female character in the epic is unfamiliar. In addition, the idea of chastity as exemplified in the epic is difficult to understand outside the context of Tamil and Indian cultural norms. This therefore invites natural criticism. The tactics adopted by Ilungo Adihal in imparting the values of virtue to common folk was different from that followed by Thruvalluvar who just gave all the maxims pertaining to life in a nutshell in the couplet format. Ilungo Adihal on the other hand took up two moral principles chastity and virtue and incorporated them into a theoretical episode so that everyone in the society will get the message. George L. Hart praises the Silapadigaram is to Tamil what the Iliad and Odyssey are to Greek. Its importance would be difficult to overstate. This is an extraordinary accomplishment. After years of toil, U. V. Swaminatha Iyer 1855-1942 published Silapadigaram in 1892 along with commentary and the explanatory notes of terms, textual variations and approaches explaining the context. M. P. Svagnanam Maposi, popularly known as Silambu Chelvar, wrote 13 books on Silapadigaram during the years 1947 to 1994, spreading the popularity of this epic considerably in the Tamil society. In the Padikam, the prologue to the book, Ilangu Adikal gives the reader the gist of the book with the precise of the story. He also lays the objectives of the book. The truth in itself will punish even the king should he err. A woman with a high moral and intellect will be respected by all. One has to pay for his acts, past and present acts of one will certainly yield their results on him. That virtue itself is the executioner of those who err in politics. That the great will ever prize a chaste woman of great virtue. That fate will inevitably follow and give the fruits of one's past actions. Ilungu Adigal abundantly clear of his objectives in threefold as given below. 1. The Pandya king pronounced the wrong judgment by which Kovalan was killed due to the manipulation of the court jeweller. The king had deviated from the righteous principles and virtuous path and later died because dharma is mightier than anything else. Aram Valiyadu, 
satyameva jayate it has been emphasized that those in power will be punished if they deviate from righteous principles two the chaste to women are very powerful in this epic the power of chastity is depicted so strongly that kannagi the chaste to women could cut off her breast burn the city and live for 15 days without food and water and go to heaven at last she became the woman of chastity and worthy of worship as goddess one has to hail the nobility of chastity in woman 3 the inevitability of the effects of wrong doings in the previous birth the concept of karma has been strongly emphasized in the epic in the previous birth kovalan was the reason for a person to be killed in this birth he was killed by the king through the court jeweler the moral the selapadigaram emphasizes is that this is not miscarriage of justice but it is the justice delivered by karma one may wonder that is it justified to die immediately on the part of pandian nadinjayan just for a wrong judgment after kannagi proved that the king had heard one should understand the background of the pandian who had come from a clan which stood for justice in his clan one of the pandya kings while walking through a street at night overheard a conversation between a brahmin couple in a house the wife was expressing her fear that the proposed journey by her husband to kasi would cause insecurity to her the husband praised the king and consoled her saying that no subject would be insecure under his rule so saying the husband left for kasi the king guarded the home of the brahmin for more than 3 months to keep up the trust of the brahmin one night he heard a male voice which he did not match with the brahmins because of his taking water from various places and the king knocked the door a rude voice came from inside and the king realized that the voice belongs to the husband realizing his mistake he knocked all the doors in the street and left all the people opened their doors and found none next day the area people made a complaint to the king about the incident the king heard their grievances patiently and told that he knew the person and asked them to tell what punishment should be awarded to him the gathering raised in one voice cut the hand that knocked the door to all their surprise the king took the weapon and cut his own hand then he narrated what had happened the people felt very sad they decided to replace the hand by a gold one and did accordingly from then on he was called porkai pandian king pandian with the golden hand a king who had come with this kind of lineage cannot withstand the injustice done either to the people or to an individual subject so his act to adhar dharma is fully justified there have been multiple movies tv serials and dance dramas based on the story of silapadikaram by the great exponents in tamil achyar kuravai the song depicting the dance of the cowherd woman in silapadigaram has been sung by m s subalakshmi and p unnikrishnan titled vadavarai mattaki anyone who has read the original text of this epic could not help marvel at its author elungodigal who was able to maintain the tempo and passions associated with the human interactions throughout the work more surprising is his comprehension and handling of purely subjective topics such as love romance and separation which only someone directly involved in family life could relate to coupled with the poetic skills of elugu adigal in capturing human emotions faithfully silapadigaram became a jewel in the crown of tamil literature 
in Tamil Nadu even today, the Tamil Association conduct Pattimandram frequently. Two groups of orators debate on a particular topic. One will be against the topic and the other one for the topic. There will be a mediator who will conclude the program pronouncing the judgment at the end on which group is correct. In such Pattimandrams, the hot topic for debate is who is the woman of chastity among the three? Is it Madhavi who became a saint as soon as she came to know that Kovalan would not return any more to her? Or is it Princess Kopirindevi who died immediately after her husband King Pandian's demise in the court? Or is it Kannagi who was alive until she proved that her husband was innocent and went to Chera kingdom to do penance for 15 days and naturally die? Studying the Silapadigaram and related works will unravel the mystery. Nevertheless, it is necessary to read the original text to appreciate the literary niceties and nuances. The universal moral message contained in the epic would be particularly relevant to the present time where the traditional marital system is being challenged through the egocentric attitudes of the partners, lowered threshold levels of tolerance to each other's idiosyncrasies and a misunderstanding of the difference between interdependence and independence, abuse of physical or mental prowess and a lack of appreciation of the family as a unit. Dear viewers, hope you have enjoyed the session. See you in the next class. Thank you.